So today I'm at the uh, Gross Rosen uh, concentration camp. Um, this is one of the smaller camps. I think there was over 200 that were uh, in Germany and in Poland and in other areas during World War II. Uh, this one, as far as the records show, uh, 40,000 people died here out of the 125 uh, some odd thousand prisoners that were here. So uh, this is what I'll be showing you guys today and something that I want to share with you. And there's actually a sign here uh, right behind me that basically you're not supposed to walk behind this area. And there's probably people that are buried here, but also being that this was in front of the camp, there was ammunition that was uh, still held here. Um, people are still dying years later. People that go through and try to build homes in these sort of areas because they don't have records of necessarily where all the bodies were buried or where all the ammunition was buried. Um, and therefore people will start digging and people have blown up even in recent times. So it's actually illegal in Poland um, in most areas to go through with any metal detectors. So basically the area behind me, if you look, uh, this whole area, um, it's, it's basically telling you not to go past this area. You still have ruins here of some of the old homes. The foundations, the basements, whatever they had here. Um, it's hard to be able to tell because this looks like it actually would have been a house, if anything else. And reason being is it would have been, at least with what currently is left standing, uh, far too small to hold uh, ammunition. So that probably right there in that area, since it's a little bit of a different material and smaller, um, and has bars in the window, could have been everything from some of the workers' quarters, if they had to sit here and work for some of the uh, Nazis that lived here. Um, or it could have been a cellar. But you could definitely see that that might have been the size of a room for somebody that would have lived here during that time. So not necessarily always the clearest of records as far as you look around this place. And we're still right now... Uh, outside of the camp, essentially. So, uh, well, you can see how it looks. Gypsies might be in some, Jews might be in another, Polish uh, might be in another, Germans might be in another. Um, very little known historical fact is that around 100,000 um, actual Germans, uh, blonde haired, blue eyed Germans, uh, died in Auschwitz alone. Um, just people who were against the Nazi party. So it wasn't just Jewish people who ended up dying here, although that, that seems to be what used to be uh, the main focus. Um, but uh, anyway, you can just see the foundation. Um, and the foundation is all around me, so you can look through here and just how many buildings there were, essentially all the way through, even though many of them have been demolished. Uh, but we're certainly going to go and try to see if we can get in some, and even there's some that are up here. So. And now I just find out that they actually took the majority of the bodies to Lignitsa. So they would transport everybody who died, put them on, uh, probably, I don't think there were even train tracks here, at least not to my knowledge. It wasn't the uh, same level of extermination that, for example, Auschwitz or Treblinka were, were built on. Um, but on the opposite side of this, there was a little peephole where essentially the commandant requested so he could actually open it up and watch the bodies being burnt. So we're going to go through and see if that's still there. This is the side, if you actually look at it. Um, where the bodies would fit in and not very large. Now you used to be able to go up to this whole thing 
and of course you have a couple areas where you can put uh, whatever they use to burn the bodies with under but if I recall correctly these little holes they had installed in there um, essentially so the commandant of the camp could take a look in there and uh, see how everybody was getting properly burnt so this is the actual bench where the camp commandant apparently looked sitting under the tree um, of course it's right next to the crematorium so he could not just see but smell the bodies getting burnt um, guard tower behind him and um, one of his favorite things apparently to do was take his hat and throw it and tell one of the prisoners to touch it for him and then during that time he would actually stand up and shoot the prisoner before he uh, got to his hat and then of course he'd call another uh, prisoner to do the same thing so this was his area where apparently he found peace while he was here um, that same commander was captured after the war uh, he was put to death the other one had committed suicide the one that was right after him before that was the one that was specifically talking about and you know, i forget his name right now this was his favorite place to sit right here in this area and it almost looks like this is still the original piece of wood <laughs> in the condition that it's in so uh, but it didn't say you can't sit here necessarily um and you can sort of see over almost the whole of the camp and of course where the workers would have been uh, taking stuff out through this area with this perspective you can see here, at least through the window, on how some of these beds were essentially set up. Um, right now, this part is closed off, and I'm not exactly sure why. Um, but you get an idea of just how many people this would have fit. Um, and it sort of stretches all the way through that block and all the way through the end of this block. Um, so I'm going to ask and find out how many people fit in each single one of these barracks. But overall, over 125,000 people were uh, locked up here, 40,000 of whom died. Um, this would have been one of the workshops that people would be working in and creating essentially anything that would support the Nazi party, or rather the Nazi war machine at this time. So you get an idea that pretty much every, under every single one of these buildings, just the vast scale and size. This was. Uh, this looks like a ramp. So everything would be produced here. This could have been a bathroom. It looks like there's drains that are built in here. But this was the ramp. So it appears everything that would have been produced here would eventually be carried out and go out of those doors up the ramp and outside of the camp or loaded onto a truck and uh, delivered to wherever it was needed.
looks like this was a water heater, rather a boiler. And the main source of water, which obviously would have come out of the boiler, gone up to the tubes and been dispersed throughout. So behind me is the original quarry where a lot of the people would work. Um, the average lifespan here was about five weeks. Uh, and those were essentially the lucky ones because the Nazis actually put in place a system where the average person should survive off their diet and uh, forced labor something like three to four weeks. So five weeks was the average time. Right now, parts of it are filled with water. Uh, but it was not uncommon, apparently, for prisoners who were working up in that area to actually jump off head first themselves and commit suicide. And of course, it wasn't that it was filled with water. Uh, but yeah, many people jumped to their death or were thrown to their death or were simply shot and discarded and thrown down from this area. So uh, the majority of this work that we see here was actually done by the prisoners that were in this camp at the time. Uh, in the daytime or not, or what it does. But it's amazing because here we are in this camp and they still actually have a German Shepherd here. And I don't know if it guards it at night time. He looks pretty well taken care of, could certainly use a brushing. Peshu, hodgdu, 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 hodge. Looks a little bit arthritic and whatnot. And I don't necessarily know what purpose they serve here. Uh, it's interesting, German Shepherds uh, were used by the military for a long time and it's almost like eating shit has actually gotten into their DNA and part of the reason was both the British military and German military would use German Shepherds to essentially, uh, they, they trained them to eat shit after the soldiers which essentially kept the camp clean. I mean one of the biggest things and the hardest things to monitor is of course everybody, um, you know, uh, where, where they use the bathroom and stuff. So it, it almost got into the bloodlines of DNA and it's like having uh, a couple German Shepherds in my lifetime, a lot of them had the, this uh, certain um, sort of natural want to eat dog shit, right? So, um, but it's interesting that they still have one here. They have two here. There's another one in this little house. So this is actually the restaurant that's here on the grounds, right in front, right, right in front of getting into the camp. And it's strange because I don't know who necessarily would have an appetite after visiting this place. And we walked in here, and there's a mouse running around on the floor. Which actually, if you were one of the uh, prisoners here, would probably be a godsend, being how hungry people were um, and not having real meat in their diets. <laughs> 